lovely to see you. Yeah, you too. It's so lovely to be here. Yeah, yeah. It feels like forever since we've spoken. It yeah. has, hasn't it? It's been a long yeah. time. It has. Um, I was just going to say to people who might not have watched this before, um, I call it Studio Musings, and it's my opportunity to introduce some of the amazing, soulful artists and coaches that I'm connected to, to all of the people that follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, because to me, it's about sharing and rippling out that amazing creative effect so that other people get to get in touch with the kinds of things we do and they may want to follow the people that I'm talking to. And today's guest is Jackie Van Wheel. And we've known each other probably about six years, yeah. maybe longer. <laughs> Something like that. Um, and met on a retreat in just outside of Byron Bay in Australia. Um, Jackie is, uh, amongst other things, an artist. And she creates these energetic um, artworks called Soul Flakes, um, which I'm going to get you to um, talk a little bit more about that because I love I really love your work, so I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that. But um, other than the art, there are many other things you do. I know that there's, um, there's other classes that you teach around energy and movement. Um, yeah. I can't remember, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name. <laughs> Qigong. I teach it's Qigong, Qigong and Tai yeah. Chi and meditation. Yeah. And um, yeah. I've done a lot of energy work in my past, hands-on healing and... Reiki and massage and wow. yeah, all that kind of things. Lots of body work as well. So not yeah. as much of that now. No. How do you think all of that fits together? What is it? What's the threads between all of that? The thread that fits it all together. I think the the, the beginning was a journey of healing for myself. So I guess working with people, working on myself, healing myself since I was 17 years old, working with this all consciously, and then moving mm. that into artwork as well. And we know how much artwork is for healing. So finding, you know, Whitney's beautiful processes and Angela and all that the Creatively Fit Coaching Team teaches mm. um, to help with healing. It helps find our direction, our truth so many layers and then also with soul flakes to add the layer of healing of everything that I've done and become and put in and intention setting and put them into artwork too so it's like this yeah. big, huge ball of energy I guess yeah yeah do you want to talk a little bit about soul flakes I don't know if you've got one you can show show and um, tell I've got, a, I've got a few so <laughs> I can see how this camera goes I'm not sure whether I should flip it or um I'm not sure what you're seeing yeah that so That's that okay. One, okay. I'll see that. Yeah. That one's called Friendship. Oh. And that was all put together from um, all a heap of girlfriends taking me to Noosa for my 50th birthday and just oh, feeling all wow. the gratitude and love and connection that people give you and friendship and lightness and fun and playing. And that one was yeah. created for this. So I'll tell you how I get to that process in a minute. This one here is one of my favorites. Oh, I love the colors. Love. Ah, oh, right. And I shouldn't say one of my favourites. They're all my favourites. That's sort of choosing like a child out, isn't it really, which is not very good. Um, <laughs> it is. So mother's love, all connection to myself as a mother, um, people that mother others in all sorts of ways, your mother, yeah. the lineage, um, feminine power, all sorts of things in this one. Oh, cool. And then this is a resin one that I do. So whoops, 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 whoops. So they're like oh. and I put resin over the top of the artwork. So they're not wow. the I That's amazing. The me. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, you can just see, I don't know <gasps> if you can see those. So yes. Around. And this one is a really big one. Oh, one that's stunning. I invited all the angels in for my clinic room and masters and Reiki yeah. energy. And they've all got Reiki in them, they've all got energy and healing. They help us to feel whole, centered, lift our vibration. Yeah. Um. There's more. <laughs> there's more. So. So yeah, they've got they're sort of everywhere really. Yeah. 
And I've got lots of little yeah. ones. And I do commission pieces for people as well. So I, I yeah. read people. Um, I get a sense of intuitively of their energy of and what they need to help them feel centered and whole. So by looking at that um, soul flake, you can help to connect more with your truth and yourself um, and create wow. some energy. So they help to raise our spirit and our energy. Yeah. Gosh, imagine, I'm just imagining what the energy is like in that room when you've got all of that surrounding you. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And then yeah. if I do an energy session in here, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really, really cool um, um, way to work. How, how, what's up, what, what would you say is your process? How do you, how do you create one of these for someone if they, if they wanted to? Um, I usually don't need a lot from them. Um, just a yes. Um, generally just the name, maybe a date of birth, but not really. Once that person mm. connects with me and I connect with them, I feel that the higher self, the soul energy or the soul flake energy is connecting. And I, you know, so often I think, how am I going to know what to do? It's just, you know, yeah. but as soon as you're in that energy, it's just like, it's these words that need to go in. It's this colors. It's, or you, you get a gist of what those colors resonate with that person um mm. occasionally you can they can say well i really like this color can you make sure that that's in there because it's all about for them but mostly i seem to get the colors right what connect with people and they tend to trust me with what they they need but it all just seems to as i sit there so i usually um will meditate for a few moments just on their name um there's been mm -hmm. ones i've done that i haven't even had a photo so i just connect with the energy of their name um and i usually just start and as I start, I get more words, more symbols for them. Um, and then the colours start to come. So usually in those first layers when I'm not doing the colours, I'll write them all down and mm. you just get a real gist of the colour. And then sort of when it's all finished, you see, to feel the story of what that soul flake's wanting to connect with that person. Um, so I write a little bit of that for the person as well. Um, right. But that changes. It's like a life's journey. And people have said they find their way moving through their soul flake and they see different things all the time you can see lots of energy in there or lots of pictures and they tend yeah. to show you different things when you need them so wow yeah yeah i guess you can go back and look at it time after time and you're going to see something different each time mm. yeah yeah so when they when they get them they they hang them on the wall and it emanates energy to them or is there something they do with it um, no, it can emanate energy to them by just having it there. Um, it, they definitely help lift the vibration in a room. Um, yeah. Definitely. You can feel when they're out of the room. You can feel ah. when they're in the room. Um, and you can work with them with intention as well. So right. you, can, you can sit with them. Um, you can meditate with them. There's some meditation processes that I can teach with them where you you sort of sit in your colours in your ball of energy and fill yourself up with that light of those colours oh. and, and really connect with it. Yeah, that's stunning. Gosh, really helpful for people as well just to get back in touch with themselves. It's interesting when you said um, at first I'm I, at first I'm thinking I don't know I don't know what I'm going to paint and that really sounds like that logical brain just trying to get in on the act. But I love the fact that you went. But then I just I just start, and so that creative side of you goes, mm, not right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And I guess all the other processes we've done with, because you know, my my art story is probably like many, is that you know, loved art at school, good at art at school, um, was told art would get me nothing or nowhere. So, you know, don't worry about that, shut it away, then you get sick, you know, then you go through a process of learning and always feeling like something's missing and you don't know a part of yourself that's really quite large. And I think, you know, we all get to that feeling at some point of how to start, how do I paint, yeah. what do I do? And I started with a kinesiology session, I guess, where a man said to me, this kinesiologist, and he said, Jackie, you have to just do something. Nothing gets you nothing. Something, ah. just start. And then that, he, without even knowing what it was going to be for me, that ideas and all of that creative expression will start flowing through you and you need to just do something, even if it's like we know now, a scribble. <laughs> <laughs> so 
it's, it's getting started in that, um, that journey that was, I guess, for a long time, I pushed aside, had my kids, had my family, and then my kids grew up and I was feeling quite, I guess, you know, lost of what was for me, still feeling a part of me that I hadn't connected with. And mm. I thought I would start playing with some artwork. And there was a, a lady on Instagram that popped up, which was Whitney, um, who <laughs> popped into my feed. And that was wonderful. And another lady called Julie Gibbons, which I don't know if you've heard of her. She's from Oh, Florida, no. And she does out. mandala work. And she, right. I did decided to do her year process and do this great round and, to explore myself and the very first part was the void and we know that the void is all about creation the creative self mm -hmm. quiet yin all of those aspects of ourself anyway so i did this process and i was in that for two weeks in january and in a meditation i got the idea of soul flakes mm. and i saw it in the meditation and i knew what it was going to be how it looked at this point i'm still not doing very much artwork i don't know how to wow. use paint i don't know how to buy canvases i'm living remotely where you have to buy everything online hours from art shops um and i started having to work out how am i going to get this out are people going to connect with it what is it what does it look like and i'd never finished that process i only made it to march oh. i think oh my <laughs> goodness so you didn't do all the because it just needed to find soul flakes with that so the name yeah. was there, what they meant, what the intention, what it was. And then I've been on a big discovery ever since. So yeah. they've really taken me on a journey, but they've taken me on a journey of healing. So mm -hmm. I have one called self-love and that's the one. I don't know if you can see in the middle up the top there. Pink, so the I pink can see. Yeah. 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 So that's called self-love. And that was the only one that didn't work. Ah, surprise, interesting. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so I left it and I played with the canvas and it wasn't working and it was muddy and I'm like, okay, I need to obviously do some work on myself to actually be able to bring through self-love for others. Yeah. Um, so it took three times and I got it. So wow. it's interesting. So every soul flake. So as well as doing commission work, I'm doing a series of words, <coughs> mm. and those words I have to be in the energy of that to be able to bring it through. So as self love, realizing that I wasn't quite there enough in my vibration to bring that through for others to heal. Um, I think there'll probably be mark two in self love. I think there's yeah. always growth around self love level. and what that means. Um, yeah, but that it shows you the power of the process. Yeah. They don't work when they don't work. Like, I can't bring wow. that through. So, yeah. It's interesting you mentioned that because um, I was in a workshop um, in Nashville, of all places, um, and that was with Whitney. And they had different canvases that you could paint on. And there was, um, uh, I can't remember, like gratitude and um, sort of love and um, joy and stuff like that. And the one canvas that was had hardly anything on it, the one that everyone avoided, was self-love. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those people. It was like I'd walk up to it and go, I'll come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was really telling. It was like, oh, why can't I paint on the self-love canvas? I think there's something I need to look at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's amazing that you mm -hmm. can't can't take people further than you're sort of taking yourself with sort of what you're saying when you when you create yeah wow. so the energy is coming through and what you can bring but mm. um so some of the main words that i haven't even done yet is love yeah abundance transformation forgiveness forgiveness they're on my next ones and they've been sitting there for mm. a little while so they're really ready right. to come through now but uh -oh. they're interesting that they're almost the most obvious words because then i put them yeah. in the jewelry so you can give someone self-love or you can. Oh. So I get the photos, I get the um, soul flakes in the series professionally photographed and then I get them reduced yeah. and then I cut them out and I put them into jewellery. Um, next right. year they're going to have resin instead of glass, which is really exciting. Um, wow. And then you can gift people love, strength, peace, That's, forgiveness, wow. you know, strength. That's such a great so, idea. Mm. And hoping to have some scarves and things. So I've got there's so much yeah. to do. <laughs> oh my yes, well there's always the next shiny bright thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> more to do, more to do. Yeah. Why? What? What was it that made you choose Soul Flakes as a name? I know you said it was given, but what does it mean if people were to ask? What What does it mean? Um, well, connecting with our soul and our truth. Um, and I think of Soul Flakes as I lived up in the, the Snowy Mountains in Australia for fifteen years. I'm back at the beach now, but that, that connection to the snowflakes has always been really, really huge for me. And yeah. I think of snowflake. Every single snowflake is individual. It's just like we are. So mm. as soul flakes, it's like, I guess, that essence of us and bringing that to the table and connecting with that ourselves. So. Yeah, each of us being different and our situations being different and all of that. Yeah, cool. Mm. Um, you mentioned the journey of returning back to art and creativity. It was after a quite some time. What would you say to other people that are in that sort of situation where they've got a calling but they're a bit scared? Have a go. Start. Do anything. Um, it's, you know, nowadays I guess with the great part of our social network online is there's lots of things to access. There's lots mm. of free things to try. There's lots of people to connect with and do anything just start mm -hmm. and you know one of the practices that we've learned we call our soul scribble um and it scribbles just scribble and color it in like mm -hmm. get a coloring book um get some paints and just slap it on there and pick a pretty color like don't get caught in what you want it to look like i oh, think it's a big thing and that whole lesson of it, no one needs to see it, you don't need to sell it, it doesn't need to hang on the wall, we just need to start the process. And it's, it, it is so healing, it is so good for our vibration, isn't it? And yeah. you get answers to all kinds of questions by getting into our intuitive mind and our creative mm -hmm. mind and out of our yeah. right brain wants to keep yeah. us safe in all our old little stories Ooh. and we get to break free of that and... It's mm. life-changing, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. And like you've just touched on about how it can free you from that sort of logical negative side of your brain. It doesn't mean that once you start painting as a, as a practice that, that that never happens. But it, for me personally, it just means that when it does happen, I recognize it so much quicker. And then I can pop back into that creative side and um, observe what the other side's trying to tell me. Um, so it, I don't think it ever goes away completely. There's always, you know, that side's always trying to wrestle control back. But I, I spend more time in that more creative side. And I think it sort of balances things out. I think it's not just one or the other sort of balances mm -hmm. things out for me. I don't know if you find that. Yeah, no, I definitely found that. And mm. I found that... You know, our, our inner critic or our part of ourself that wants to judge us and go, oh, you can't do that. Why do you think people are going to connect with soul flakes? Blah, 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 blah. Or what are you painting? Or that doesn't look any good or all of that and the control around that. Um, I think when you start to flex the muscle of going from side to side, you mm. need to be able to maybe recognise and be aware of, oh, oh, there's that feeling I'm being judgy or I'm being whatever. Okay, yeah. I have the tools to step out of that. And it may be in a painting that's not going well or mm. not going how you want. And, mm. you know, you might choose to then just go do something else or do a little scribble or or mm. or change it or keep trusting the process and just keep going. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, do you think it's playing. Yeah. Do you think it's translated into other areas of your life? Totally. Yeah, mm. definitely, because mm. I guess those creative solutions and you become more aware of how you're feeling as well. And I, I guess Qigong talks a lot about this as well. So bringing our awareness to ourselves and what we need and then we know right. we get to choose. So um, I think that's the biggest responsibility if we have. It's, oh, I'm really tired today. You know, I feel terrible. I know that art will pick me up. I know that a walk will. I mm. know that sometimes I need to go to sleep and have a rest yes. and have a quiet day. And if I'm really tired and I choose not to have a sleep, then that's okay. You know. Mm. So I guess it's 
learning to be aware. And the more you do these things and flex both muscles and, and, and work out what you're doing energetically, then you can have the yeah. choice to go, yeah, I want yeah. to recognise when you've been cranky and go, but I'm not, you know, because we, we still, a big thing, I think, and a big thing for me is procrastinating that time for art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where we do all these other things and we keep pushing mm -hmm. that, like that's some special yeah. thing that we don't get to do. That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your house can be nice and tidy and everything's put away and you've done all the washing and then I might have some time for art. Whereas um, I think if you think you've only, if you believe we're only here once, then maybe you should do art first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this just will still it. be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it is funny because we. I, I'm. I, I'm. Even when I come in the studio at times, sometimes I feel like I just need to clear and tidy in here before I start. Um, mind you, sometimes after a session, I probably really should clear and <laughs> clear in here because it's yeah. everywhere. Um, I mean, that's the best and thing also, about online, isn't it? Because you can go look. You know that part of the studio. Yeah, look at absolute mess. But this is all pretty and beautiful for the this camera. This is pretty. Exactly. This looks great. Don't look over there. <laughs> look over there. <laughs> yeah, look that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's that's absolutely true. I think I love being in my studio because I guess everything in here is mine and I don't have to tidy it if I don't want to. And then when I'm finished, I can just shut the door and walk out. And when I come back, everything is exactly where I left it. Um, so, I, yeah, and I love... I don't know whether, do you have a practice before you start painting? Because um, I quite often sage the room and I've got my crystals and um, often I, play, I have music playing as well, but I just try to create like an atmosphere before I go to the canvas. Yeah, and I've got to, I usually have candles and I pick the crystals depending on how I'm feeling for whatever canvas. Definitely with soul flaking, put essential oils in the water a lot. Um, just to have some, you know, some of that and, you know, and, and sometimes it's really nice to, um, to talk, like the days you don't, you feel heavy or you don't feel like getting, you don't know how to get started and you're not in my room. I find if I come in and start tidying and pottering and setting uh -huh. up, I, it, it tends to go, oh, I'm going to paint now. Like it starts, yeah. like we're lucky enough to have these beautiful rooms. So the energy starts mm -hmm. to just playing in the room gets you into that part of you that starts as well yeah yeah um i think that's absolutely true um because even if it's just putting one mark on a canvas it then you you then sort of go oh well as soon as i'm doing that well i might just mm, i'm just getting another color out yeah. <laughs> oh that needs mark there <laughs> and before you know it you've, you've been painting for an hour or something like that but there are times where i'll walk through and i'll literally just do a dot on a canvas and go okay that's it for today and then and then keep going. But um, I find, because obviously I have lots of administrative tasks to do, and especially when you're running your own business and um, any other jobs and things like that, you you have all of these sort of repetitive or stressful kinds of routines. When I come in here, I just feel like it just goes, <sighs> yeah, a bit like letting the air out of the balloon. It's quite nice to just yeah. chill. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely, isn't yeah. it? It's definitely, and I think the more you work in the space and the more you're in it, the more it creates. I'm about to have to turn mine back into a kitchen and lounge room, though, so I'm going to have to share for a couple of months because we're really oh, no. so. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to share. <laughs> but when that renovation's finished, did you get it back? That's right. And then it's got oh, okay. a new feeling again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um what do you think it is that brings you back to creating time after time i guess it's how good it makes me feel and like i said right. it's something i do i push and then i miss it and you don't realize till you're doing it and when you miss it how much you miss it um mm. so for me, I guess it's that missing it and really trying always to just keep it more and more into my life. Um, and then you'll find a couple of weeks it just gets so busy and you, 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 you get a feeling um, of missing it. Then if you just make the effort for a little bit, it lifts you, mm -hmm. it makes you feel better, it makes you feel happier. 
more content. Yeah. Like it's just such a nice feeling being in the space. I love that, it. Yeah. Yeah. I find that um, I'm not one. Uh, I know a lot, quite a few people that talk about having a daily practice. I'm not. It's like I don't daily journal. I don't. The, I, the, I don't have a daily practice when it comes to creativity. I have things that I do regularly, or irregularly. <laughs> but um, so I saw. So I I talk about it more like I binge paint. So mm -hmm. I may not do anything for a while, and then I'm all in, and I'm I'm doing all these different things, and I've got two or three canvases on the go, and it's all happening. But I find that if I don't do it for a period of time, I get really cranky mm. yeah and I don't like I don't like myself yeah. very much <laughs> yeah you do you get it just feels different doesn't it yeah 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 so for me it's like if I go in the studio that's good for the family because I'm a much nicer person when I come out <laughs> yes yeah yeah. yeah, another good reason to do it. <laughs> exactly. I find myself not shouting at the dogs quite so much because they're barking and fighting and uh, all the other things. Um, yeah, so I could come in here and just sort of decompress. But yeah, I, I do sometimes listen to people saying, oh, you must have it. I, I'm not a very good one for must either, actually, but you must have a daily practice. And it's like, hmm. Mm. That no, it's not going to work for me. Um, I I need to have no, feel, I think, feel it. Mm. Yeah, I think we do, we do, and I think all our personalities are really different, aren't they? And some people are really good with the routine and needing that. Mm. And then there's you, you know the likes of me who, if I get too caught on that, I, you get more beating yourself up because you're not doing it. And I my life it just never seems to go that way. It, I. I think it's I'm a Leo and there's always these little things that pull you and go, come and have some fun here. And, you know, so I'm, I'm definitely the same in not a daily practice. And sometimes yeah. I'd really like to be good at this and do it every day and be perfect and then it yeah. just never happens. So I'm, yeah. you know, it needs to be much more thing in flow. And notice again when I haven't been. Because then yeah. I think it comes more flow too. So you're in your I flow. think so. Yeah. I think the one thing that I have noticed though, over maybe the last couple of years, previously I would have wanted to do all the things. So um, lots of different techniques, trying, um, you know, um, modeling paste or putting um, paper, papers on my works or printmaking or just, you know, like all the things. And I, and I think over the last sort of two years, I've really started to hone it down to what are the things that I really like? Um, but before that, it would have been a case of, why can't I just stick at one thing? Why do I, I'm trying this and now I'm doing that and I'm doing this. And it's like, well, actually, I think what, what, what for my personality type, that's a case of trying all the things until I get a tool belt of the things that I really enjoy and not feeling guilty of, about all the materials for the other things that I'm now going, would somebody like these? Because <laughs> I don't need them anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I think. And I, think um, mm. I think too, if you're a creative, well, some like feeling like a creative being, and I love to learn. So you're always going, oh, I want to do that, or I'd like to learn that, or I want to know how that feels, and exploring through everything, especially when it comes to the, I don't know, creativity and making and exploring mm -hmm. all sorts of things like that it's, it's I, yeah i love it but it can pull you away from your painting a little bit sometimes <laughs> the next thing you're making a macrame hanging for a friend's yeah. birthday <laughs> yeah because that seemed like a really good idea or uh, um one of those mats where you pull the pull the wool through yeah. that was that was me last year it's yeah. like yeah yeah i need to learn how to do that yeah um i sometimes think there's a lot of um yeah of being unrealistic, there's lots of things I'd love to do. Like, I'd love to learn how to play the guitar, but am I ever going to dedicate the time and the effort? Probably not. But it's one of those things you sort of think, oh, I'd love to be able to play the guitar. <laughs> so there's loads of things you can do as a creative. You could actually go and learn things. But, you know, I realize time is somewhat elastic, but I've still got to be realistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it stretches this much, not this yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I was wondering what what um, 
what tips you might have for new artists, like for starting. I, I, it's more around, I get asked questions lots of times about what sorts of things do I need? Like, do I need to spend a lot of money to start? Yeah, what would you I, don't, I don't think you need to spend a lot of money to start. I think you can get some nice acrylic paints, a little set, and some textures and some colouring pencils, whatever. I think it's just getting started, a little cheap canvas, a couple mm. of paintbrushes, and just paint for the sake of the play and the painting. Don't try to paint something mm. in particular, I think. Sometimes trying to put too much expectation on yourself. Um, mm. But there's so many little, again, lovely supports there online or that you can do that a little that you can get going with and that I think are really nice. I think, you know, yeah. even Nadia's feathers, gratitude feathers, that's such mm -hmm. a beautiful, simple way to play with some paints and yep. be guided through a lovely process. And I think we have lots of nice mm -hmm. little processes like that to uh, that you can do on your own at home and just sit there at a table with some watercolours. Um, yeah, yeah. Whitney's and meditation, just, um, the 21-day um, mm, painting meditation. Uh, things yeah. like that, I think, and some watercolours or textures. Mm, um, just some, to play, just something to play with. I think, yeah. and you've said it a couple of times, I think you're right, this idea that people want to make it look like something, it can actually stop you from starting. And um, I always say to my students, what's in my head is not what comes out on my canvas. I let that go a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> nice. um, yeah, yeah. It's like, because my hands do not do exactly what, it, what in my head I imagine that it's going to look like. The other one as well that I, I've noticed is that um, people seem to think that they should just be able to paint something recognizable from their imagination. So I don't know, as an example, an elephant and be able to go up to a canvas and be able to paint an elephant because they know, <coughs> sorry, what an elephant looks like. I don't think any artist does that. They always have some reference. They always have something they can look at and go, that's what the portions of an elephant are. Not just go, Lane, 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 paint, paint, paint. Oh, there's an elephant. And I think I've been through this with my students, is if you want to paint something, sorry, <coughs> you've got something in mind, have a reference. It doesn't mean that you're copying, but to at least understand what it is. Yeah. Sorry, you're not confusing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that, having that reference and having something to look at. I think... Art and drawing is one of those things we think as a child, that person can do that and I can't. Therefore, I can't do that. Only very special people get the gift of drawing or being able to paint. And I don't believe that that's true. I believe that everybody can do that and everyone can paint. So using all the tools like, you know, it's so great to do Google images and pick a shape of a really simple elephant mm. and just do something similar to get your shapes and things that you want. But, yeah, yeah. To, to be able to expect to be able to draw really well mm. when we've never done it, it's like for other things we go and have lessons and we learn and we build up and we practice. And for some yeah. reason we all think if we can't draw, we can't draw. So, mm. Yeah, that's crazy. Actually, I think as well it's good, like you said, go to Google, Google Images. I quite often tell them to... Um, Go and, like, if you want to see, I'll go back to elephant. If you want to do an elephant, just type in elephant sketch or elephant black and white drawing. So then what you get is actually just the lines. Because mm. sometimes if you've got a photograph, it's really, it can be really tricky to take that photograph and then, and, and then translate that onto your artwork. So actually just getting a black and white sketch. Again, just get your dimensions and stuff. I think it's really good. But, like, so the reason, just the reason I was talking about that is not that I think people should go off and do this, but it's just so to tell people that you don't have to have all the answers. You don't need to know what it's going to look like or even, you don't even need to paint a thing. Or, or like you said earlier, just make some marks and see what happens. And I, I think yeah. the feeling of, especially sometimes you get a little bit connected and you get, oh, I like that and I like those colours and you get scared to go further because you don't want to wreck it. 
<laughs> you know, and it's like sometimes keeping going is a good thing. Um, at mm -hmm. the moment I'm doing this painting of a vision for a friend as a commission of a lake and a mountains in my head and I've, I've got an idea and I know it's not quite right yet. Um, but the other day I went to play with the water and I thought I wanted to put something on it that didn't work. Like it could have wrecked it all. But I went, okay, this is looking really bad. It's not right, but just keep going. And then I ended up with this amazing effect. Wow. It was really good. But it was like, and I think that's the thing, it's learning not to panic at those places like I've wrecked it. It's now not working. The whole thing's destroyed. <laughs> I can't do it. It's like, yeah. oh, well, it's paint. You can actually just paint over it and I think that's yes. the biggest thing is it you could just go over it it doesn't matter yeah yeah it certainly doesn't that's really good advice um because yeah I could, yeah I've heard that quite a number of times in workshops right oh I've ruined it or it's not as good as theirs or it's yes, not you know are. yeah it's just not working I'm rubbish and all of that it's like no just try it with a hairdryer and we'll just do another layer <laughs> Um, and just see what happens. I've, I have had lots of instances, in, even in my own artwork, where I feel like I've made a mistake, potentially. And then that mistake becomes the most interesting thing on the whole canvas. And so was it a mistake? Probably not. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it builds and I, up the trust. It does. And I, I, when I'm painting, I've taken it away from me painting i i talk about i i believe the canvas is in charge so if the canvas is in charge and all i'm being is the vessel for whatever it is to come through then it's not me doing anything all i'm doing is choosing the implement and the color and putting it on the canvas that that's as much choice as i get in the whole process otherwise it just sort of it's just coming through me and I'm just allowing it but the more that I start that sort of thinking and trying, trying to, to make it a something, that's when my inspiration gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, yeah, so I can feel when I'm, do, when I'm doing it because I'm not immune to it either. But I can, I'm really well aware when I'm doing it and I go, I'm going to walk away. You can feel it coming in and you feel your mind starting to want it to be a certain way or, mm. or oh. that that you try to control and then it's like yeah. start playing and just yeah, as you say, when you so and you know, sometimes occasionally like my son will ring in that time I'm painting or something and you just start you just keep going while you're talking. And I find, oh, wow, check that effect out. Because it's like you've sort of taken, <laughs> your, your brain's busy having a great conversation and you, 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 yeah. there's a part of you the left just playing with the canvas. And I'm fine. Yeah. A couple of times that's been really fun too. It's like, oh, yeah. what happened while we were on look the Look what phone. happened. <laughs> it's funny you mention that because I was listening to a podcast the other week and like, for the life of me, can't remember. It was an artist podcast. And they were talking about they watch Netflix when they're painting for the exact same reason of what you said, because it means that they're concentrating-ish on whatever's, you know, movie or whatever they're watching, and they're just painting and playing and making marks, but they're not thinking about it and they're not judging. They're just choosing colors and making marks. And and by the end, like, they just said that, oh, my gosh, it's amazing what came out, because I guess that judgment has completely gone because yeah. you're too busy watching Netflix. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I haven't tried it. Yet. <laughs> yeah, well, the phone call works well, so I guess yeah. that that could work too. Or if you're feeling really stuck, to just let go and open up, because our our mind. I know even just like um, the moving meditation in Tai Chi and Qigong is that your brain's really active trying to do something, so you tend mm. to get into a really beautiful space because your mind's counting or working on some other part. And yeah, it's a great way to be able to let go and maybe come more uh. centered as well. Right. Oh, that's really good advice. Yeah, yeah. So um, what's lighting you up right now? What's the thing that's inspiring you at the moment? My house renovations, <laughs> <laughs> which is a really creative process as well. My husband's a carpenter builder and he's yeah. doing it all. So we've sort oh. of got this couple of months set aside where it's about the house. So in that I'm missing, I'm just getting a little bit of time painting. I've been missing soul flakes a little bit going. I need 
yeah. and trying to work in a little bit of my play and keep going but knowing that okay next year the house will be done will be ready and yeah. my studio will be yeah. reset and it will be really time to sort of move forward with it so it's sort of like I'm feeling a little pause but in that picking kitchen tiles is all very creative course painting beams and things and mm -hmm. so yeah I, I love yeah. the process as well because it is creative so yeah um, yeah that, yeah I think that's a good point actually because people will say to me oh I'm not creative but yet they're creative in all different areas of their life like you've just said like painting the house or choosing what's going to go in it or where it's going to be or your tiling or whatever is being creative. How you do your garden or um, even, you know, the way you dress when you go out the door, all of that's creative, is you know, super creative. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you said that. So, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, the, it wasn't an answer I was expecting, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, I, and I, think, I think too sometimes like we've, I guess the time out from another project, which is, you know, what the house is a large project, but mm. I have to paint weatherboards at the moment and it's oil on weatherboards. And I've been putting Esther Hicks, um, a storybook called Sarah, which is her children's story, you know, in right. my ears while I'm painting these boards. So I'm sort of working with um, myself and learning and energy. It might be a podcast about creativity or something else while I'm having to do mm. something a little bit mundane that's still yeah. contributing towards my larger project. So yeah. I've really been enjoying that the last couple of weeks of putting in and getting a little high vibe story and um, listening to some good things that really inspire me to keep going and my energy while I'm doing these other jobs. Mm. So I've been finding that yeah. really nice too. That's really good advice, actually. Um, I didn't. I didn't think that I would enjoy um, creative podcasts, but I actually do because to me, I, I obviously believe I'm really visual. But to hear other artists um, talk about their process or um, even just their lives, you know, like they don't just come out like a fully formed artist. You know, the, your mum's not handed a baby and go, "Okay, you go an artist." <laughs> it's like to hear what their journeys are that's super inspiring but also like you said like um sort of abraham hicks and other things where um you get more inspiration outside of yourself is is super super useful because all of that you can bring back to your creativity and your artwork mm -hmm. um and i listen i guess i listen to all sorts of things and um i also enjoy um i'm a big harry potter fan Oh, I so love I, I love magic. I love Harry Potter. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I love anything to do with magic, and it's not necessarily for me. It's not necessarily like it's not like Twilight books or, or stuff like that. For me, it's more like books where magic is happening all around you if you look, mm -hmm. and there's something about that. And I think it's to do with creativity. It's like in creativity. It helps you access the magic that's around you, synchronicity and all of that all the time. So I think that's why I'm attracted to um, reading those kind of books. So I am reading, I can't remember the name of it, but I found a new adult fiction series from a French writer. Um, and, again, and again, it's like going into this well, for her, this world, all of the things in your house talk to you. Everything's got a vibration. Oh, wow. Um, and I have to share the name of that series. Yeah, I will. I will. There's, there's quite a big series that like this thick. So, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying being on the, another adventure. And I'll bring that back when I, when I go to the canvas. So mm -hmm. I think you can find inspiration in lots of different places and not necessarily just by reading another how-to art book or videos or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah I'm glad you go. Yeah, I agree. And that, that, that when you mentioned the symbols and seeing more magic and that how things come into your life, that, you know, we could do a whole two hours on symbols and stories, I reckon. I mean, once you yeah. start looking and you start yeah. know, knowing the availability of what everything around us is showing us, yeah, and and it, it comes in when you really need it and you notice and then it can amp up and it is just the most fun thing and it's so true and yeah 
it happens. I know I was picking a symbol one year. A white feather was what came to me intuitively. And we were driving nine hours. And in the car, I sort of thought, I'll do a little meditation on that. I'll just think about it and go, oh, if it's meant to be, I know, I'll give it 24 hours, I'll find a white feather. So I'm like going, okay, well, I'm sort of, you know, maybe I should have said a few days. But I went, no, no, 24 hours. Anyway, yeah. we pulled up an hour later at a toilet stop. I stepped out of the car and the first thing I saw was two white feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, the power of intention, the symbol, yeah. whatever. So that year it was the symbol was yeah. white feather for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, have a, I have a similar story in that um, when I was working in corporate, um, my role was being made redundant and they were trying to persuade me to take a, a different role with the same company. And I wasn't, I didn't really want to take the role, but, you know, like money was useful. And, um, and I remember the day that I had to go in and I had the meeting with HR and the, manage, and the management and I went in through the foyer of the building and then through another set of doors and then I went into the lift and on the floor in the lift was a white feather. Yeah. And I picked it up and I put it in my pocket and when I went into the meeting and I just said, I'm not interested. Yeah. Because it was yeah. like, there was, for me, there was no better sign than, I mean, how on earth it got there from, you know, you had to go through two sets of doors before you even got to the lifts. Yeah. And there it was in the middle of the floor in the lift. And I thought, that's the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. And it was the best thing I ever did. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think you do. You just it's just being more aware. And I think when you when you do delve into creativity, you maybe become a little bit more observant because mm -hmm. you're sort of looking for inspiration around you. Um, but the same. And then the more you there. get, the more you get, isn't it? Like then you start uh -huh. to notice. So you start to, I guess, it creates its energy in what comes and when it comes. So yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But it's like, well, okay, now we know that you're awake. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's been fantastic talking to you. Um, how do people find you? Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been, it's been so much fun. I haven't done this Hello. before, so it's been yeah. really fun. Um, yeah. You can find me on Instagram at Soul Flakes and it's Soul Flakes underscore. Um, you can yeah. find me on Facebook at Soul Flakes or Jackie Van Wheel. And I also have a website, which is soulflakesww.com.au. Um, so, oh, perfect. So okay. there's quite a few yeah. ways to find me. And you can personally yeah. message me. Um, yeah, you can have a chat. Yeah, de so, yeah. definitely so, anyone who's watching, if you want your own Soul Flake, definitely get in touch. Um, thank you so much for your time today. And it's been fantastic talking to you. And it feels like forever since we've spoken, but then it feels like yesterday at the same time. So, um, and I just love what you've shared with me and um, I'm sure everybody who gets to watch this, because um, I'll also put it on YouTube. Um, yeah, um, it's just been really lovely. So thank you very much for coming today. Thank you for asking me and Yay. thank you for having me. I feel <laughs> deeply grateful and appreciative. Yeah. How about us on the full moon, hey, with this beautiful lunar eclipse coming tonight? And it's like enjoy the magic, everyone, of the letting go of moving forward. Yeah, forwards. exactly. Last one of the year, I think it is. So, yeah, yeah, let's let 2021 go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, thank you so, so much. You're welcome. Okay, lots of love. Yeah, lots of love. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.